in this section, what you are going to learn are what are the key components of any linear programming or mixed integer programming model that you want to build. So in this way, you will learn how general are these uh, models and how they can be applied on many industries. In this section, uh, using the furniture problem, we are going to use um, and explain the general formulation of linear and mixed integer programming problems. So let's consider the following. As, as, as you remember, when we were defining the furniture problem, x1 uh, is the decision variable representing the number of chairs to produce. And we are using the index 1 to refer to the product chairs. And also, the other decision variable was x2. And we use the index uh, 2 to refer to the product table. So um, with this idea in mind, we can create a set of products, mapping each product with the index associated with each uh, decision variable. To explain the key components of linear programming, uh, we have defined two decision variables. One decision variable is x1, uh, which represents the number of chairs to produce. And we use the index 1 to, refers to, to refer to the product chair. By the other hand, x2 is the decision variable representing the number of tables to produce. In this case, the index 2 refers to the product table. We can create a set of products, mapping each product with the index associated with each decision variable. So the set of products will be equal to chair with the index 1 and table with the index 2. Um, similarly, we can create a set of resources as follows. The set of resources are, are, are going to be composed by two elements. The mahogany resource will that will have the index of 1 and the labor resource that will have the index of 2. The LP model has several types of parameters representing the known quantities or data that characterize the problem. So for example, prices can be defined over the set of products. So we can use the parameter B1 uh, equal to 45, uh, meaning that the price of a chair is going to be $45. But if the price of a chair uh, changes, then B1 will be equal to 50 or whatever new price we, we have. Uh, by the other hand, uh, the price of, of a table will be named B2, and in this particular case, B2 will be equal to $80. Also, for the resource capacity, we can use two parameters. K1 means the availability of mahogany, and K1 will be equal to 400 units of mahogany. And K2 will be the amount of labor avail uh, available and will be equal to 450 hours. So we have another type of parameters that we call uh, technology coefficients that describe the consumption of resources when a product is built. For example, for this particular furniture problem, we say that A11 is equal to 5. Remember, the first index refers to the resources and the second index refers to the products. So A11 means that five units of mahogany are consumed when we build one chair. A12 equal to 20 means that 20 units of mahogany are consumed when we build one table. A21 equal to 10 means that 10 units of labor are consumed when building one chair. And A22 equal to 15 means that 15 units of labor are consumed when building one table. So as, as, as before, um, we can represent all this information in, in terms of, of a table. 
But in mathematics, this type of table, uh, we call it arrays. Uh, so in this particular case, we have a two-dimensional array where the rows represent the set of resources and the columns represent uh, the set of uh, products. So um, this LP model has two types of constraints that limits the number of chairs and tables that can be produced. These constraints uh, can be defined by over the set of resources, and we have two types of resources, the mahogany resource and the labor resource, and represent the consumption of each resource by the production plant. And we impose that this consumption of resources cannot exceed the amount available of resources. Finally, we have an objective function, which in this case is to maximize total revenue uh, generated by the production plan, which is defined by X1 and X2. So let's summarize what has happened. In general, linear programming problems uh, ha has five components. Set of indices, parameters, decision variables, constraints, and objective. So for this particular uh, furniture problem, we have two types of sets. The set of resources and the set of products. The set of resources have two types of resources, mahogany and labor. Mahogany has an index of one and labor has an index of two. The set of products uh, have two types of products, chairs and tables and the index for chairs is one and the index for table is two. But we have another type of component that we call parameters. And we have three types of, of parameters. Product prices, resource capacity, and technology coefficients. Another uh, component of a linear programming problem are the decision variables. And as we have explained, we have two types of decision variables. One for the production of chairs, which is uh, called X1. And remember, the index one defined over products refers to chairs. And X2 uh, is the number of tables uh, to make uh, in order to satisfy the capacity constraints. The, the, also, we have two types of constraints. The amount of mahogany available per week and the amount of labor uh, available per week. Finally, we have the objective function, which is to maximize total uh, weekly revenue. Let's make an abstraction and generalization of the furniture problem. In the original formulation, we have the actual values of each of the parameters of the furniture problem. The parameterization of an LP problem is important because it allows one to separate data from the model. That is, we can change the value of the data without changing the model. In the parameterized formulation, we have the parameters um, that represent the furniture problem instantiated with the actual values of the problem. So for example, uh, we were using uh, 45 to, repre uh, to represent the price of, of, of the chairs. So we can use a general parameter to represent price of the chairs, which is B1. Similar B2 represent the price of a table and also um, a11, A12, etc., are the technology uh, coefficients that will be a general representation of the consumption of resources by the products. So we instantiate it by the actual values that we have in the problem. And K1 and K2 will be the parameters for the capacity resources that we have instantiated by four. K1 equal to 400, representing the unit of capacity of mahogany, and K2 equal to 450, representing the capacity of labor. The parameterized uh, LP formula, uh, formulation of the furniture problem 
where B1 uh, represent the price of a chair and B2 represent the price of a product. K1 and K2 are the resource capacity and um, the left hand side of the constraints uh, are represented by K1 and K2 and uh, the technology constraints are represented by the parameters A. What would happen if instead of having two products, we have many products and many resources? In this case, we use the indices of the set of uh, products and set of constraints. So the symbol uh, sigma is used in mathematics to represent large sums. So the index J represents uh, products. So sigma from J equal to 1 to 2 represents the products of price BJ times uh, production of product XJ. So this sigma of 1 to 2 of BJ XJ really represent B1 X1 plus B2 X2. The index I represent resources. So for I equal to 1, we have the capacity constraint, and for I equal to 2, we have the labor constraint. And the non-negativity constraints are represented by the index J for the production of, uh, of tables or chairs. So let, uh, let's now generalize the formulation of the furniture problem and assume that instead of having two products, we have n products. And instead of having uh, two resources, we have m resources. In this general formulation, the term bjxj represents the revenue associated to product j. Remember, the symbol sigma from 1 to n represents the total revenue generated by the production plan of end products. The bj coefficient are called the objective function coefficients. And the index i represent the resource constraint, where ki is the right-hand side of the constraint uh, that represents the capacity uh, available of a resource i. The sigma in the left-hand side uh, of, of, of this inequality that goes from 1 to n represents the total consumption of resource i by the production plan of n uh, products. The less than equal uh, inequality represents um, that we cannot be consume more than the capacity available, which is equal to ki. Finally, we have the non-negativity constraints that basically says that the production of any type of product from 1 to n should be greater or equal to 0. And for the particular model formulation of the furniture problem, we have n equal to 2 and m equal to 2. But now we have a general uh, formulation of this problem. So let's now discuss the different representations of formulation of a variety of mathematical optimization problem. So um, we are going to discuss now the general formulations of linear programming problems and mixed integer programming problems. So in, in, as we present one of the components of, of a linear or integer programming problem will be that we have an objective that we want to optimize. And this optimization can be to maximize the objective or to minimize the objective. For example, a maximization of uh, total revenue, this is an example where we want to have as much revenue as possible. A minimization problem will be to minimize total cost. Now, in terms of the constraints, we, ha we can have less or equal constraints. Typically, uh, we have less or equal constraints when we have capacity constraints, as in the furniture problem, where we cannot exceed uh, the amount of capacity that we have of each resource. Other type of constraint that we can have 
are the greater than uh, equal constraints. And for example, of, of this uh, problem will, will be that when we have a demand of a certain product and we want to ensure that at least a certain level of demand is satisfied. Also, we can have equality constraints. And these are used when we want to match exactly the activities that we have with given requirement. For example, a job position can only be filled with only one resource. And you have a set of possible qualified resources to assign on the job. So this particular constraint will be defined by an equality constraint. Another important problem is that we, when we, we require that the, that the decision variables are not only uh, non-negative, but th that we impose that they are integer uh, values. So in this case, we will have objective function, we will have constraints, but not only will require that the decision variables are non-negative, we also require that the decision variables are integer. Another important problem in math programming is where, that we call a binary problem, which this, this problem is really a subset of integer programming problem. So in this particular case, we not only require that the variable, uh, the decision variables are integer, but uh, the decision variable can only take two values, zero or one. In this case, we, we, we say that we have a binary problem. These binary problems are very important because the, they can uh, uh, address combinatorial optimization problems. Mixed integer programming, uh, linear programming uh, problems are a combination of a linear uh, programming problem where we only require that the variables are uh, non-negative. We have another variables that we require that they should be integer and we have other set of variables that we require that they are uh, binary. So solving uh, mixed integer programming problems, it's, uh, it is possible to have um, equivalent formulations. But the performance of the MIP solver can be drastically different. This is why when formulated a mixed integer programming model, it is very important to understand how the MIP algorithms behind the MIP solver behave. Hence, when uh, we will present a limited discussion of the solution process associated with linear programming and a mixed integer linear programming problems. So, when solving uh, MIP problems, it is possible to have equivalent formulations of the problem but the performance of the MIP solver can be very different, as we have mentioned. So if Gurovi would be like a Formula uh, One race car, a bad formulation will be like using square tires in this race car. So it is critically important that your formulation is efficient and effective. Thank you very much. <laughs>